Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Lynn Potvin. I'm tuning in with you again for another installment of Wellness Ed Sunday. And um, I hope you all are having a great weekend and that you've had a good time, at least here in the Northeast, perhaps even gearing up for the nice storm that we're going to get here this week. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to parts of it, though. Of course, the, uh, the shoveling is uh, always a bit burdensome. But um, you know, while people are trapped inside for more of the winter, it's really easy for them to also spend more time on screens. Now, one thing I've noticed in practice, um, in my private practice, is that um, people are, you know, tend to struggle with how much screen time is good is appropriate for them. And we typically have this conversation, especially in the realm of stress management and um, downtime and the essential nature of downtime, the essential um, benefits of being outside, being away from technology. So that's something that, that I talk about a lot with patients. And um, those conversations have had to happen a lot more frequently lately. And, and what I started to notice, uh, especially in the last few months, that people have been spending more time paying attention to the news, paying attention to online social media feeds, and this is what's happening to them. Um, I've been seeing a lot more issues with sleep. I've been seeing a lot more fatigue, just general fatigue throughout the day. Um, I've been seeing a lot more people recognizing that, that they get agitated more easily. Um, I've noticed that people have had a bit more of a difficult time managing stress, um, and they um, have noticed that they do spend a lot more time staring at screens, either their phone, their computer, TV. Um, and some of it, you know, of course, here in Maine, we are in the middle of winter, people are oftentimes struggling um, mental, mental, mentally, emotionally anyway through the winter. But I certainly have noticed, and, and many people have expressed explicitly to me that they have noticed a huge um, increase in their time on social media and using technology and staring at their phones and at their computers. So, you know, it's, it's a tricky thing because I think certainly people don't want to be missing out on information that may be important um, for them or for people that they care about. Um, People want to know how to engage with their communities. People want to know how to um, meet up with others in their community. But the reason why people end up noticing those physiological effects that I was telling you about, you know, the sleeplessness, um, increased agitation, etc., fatigue, is, is that um, time in front of most screens actually will up the sympathetic part of your nervous system. So there's there's a part of uh, a sector of your nervous system that's responsible for running everything that's automatically run. Your breathing rate, your digestion, your heart rate, all of that stuff. Um, and there is a sympathetic part of this, what we call the autonomic nervous system, and a parasympathetic part of that ner nervous system. So we have um, the sympathetic, which is your um, fright and flight mode. It's your stress mode. And then we have your parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest mode. And when one is up, when your stress part of your, you know, automatically running, um, our autonomic nervous system is, is up, the other one can't be up. It has to be down. So this is part of the reason, you know, many of you have probably experienced this. This is why when people spend or people have gone into a stressful situation, it oftentimes messes with their digestion because when they are in a stressed out mode, their body isn't going to prioritize resting and digesting, right? So um, a lot of times we don't, we don't connect those dots, but when we're in a stressful situation, our, our ability to rest, relax, and do things like sleep and digest and all of that is going to be lowered. Well, the thing about being in front of screens for a long period of time, or not even a long period of time, um, is, is that that increases the functioning or increases the response of your sympathetic nervous system. 
So that means that when we spend a lot of time in front of screens and technology, if that part of our autonomic nervous system is up and you know fully functioning, um, full steam ahead, our restful part or the part of our nervous system that's running our rest mode is going to be floundering. So this is you know all leading up to people's difficulties with sleep, people's difficulties, you know, kind of maintaining their emotional state, they're feeling pretty volatile, pretty friable. Um, and so it's, it's really essential at this point in time to take some breaks from screen time because that, if you've ever watched somebody that's been staring in front of the TV or at their phone for a while, pay attention to how often they blink. You probably won't see them blink very often at all. And the reason for that is that, you know, if you're in stress mode, you're going to, you know, uh, subconsciously be as alert or vigilant as possible. Your body and your brain thinks that you, it's, it, you're preparing to run away from saber tooth tiger. So your body is acting in, in its best interest by keeping you at that, you know, in that stress mode. But we have to make the conscious decision to peel our eyeballs away from technology and from screens to be able to give our nervous systems a chance to rest and reboot and rebalance. So um, what I find is even uh, trickier is that we're all a little bit di different. Our nervous systems, none of us have the same nervous system, right? Um, same structure, same function, but you know, all of us have different sensitivity levels. So some people may not tolerate much screen time at all. And that's something, those are conversations I've had to have with people that are particularly sensitive. Um, some people um, have to really pay attention to when they reach their limits and they'll know that they reach their limits when they experience symptoms like they're getting kind of nauseous, they're having a hard time sleeping at night, um, they're kind of spacing out at work and not really able to maintain productivity. And these are symptoms that can sound like a lot of other things, but if you tend, you know, into that symptom picture already, spending a lot of time in front of a screen, which can increase your stress level subconsciously, can aggravate that. So, so I really have to, you know, talk to people um, already knowing what they're kind of predisposed towards. Um, and if people are particularly self-aware, they'll know this about themselves, right? So part of, part of the learning too is um, figuring out, being very body aware of yourself and figuring out when you reach those limits. I actually came across this really great article today. Um, it's just interesting that I'm having way more of these conversations with my patients, but this, um, this really great article came up um, let's see, it's mentalfloss.com, had a great article. And it's tips for staying informed without experiencing media burnout. And the media burnout is, I think, that kind of stress level burnout that I've been describing to you so far. Um, because I think it's, it's fair that people want to stay informed, but how do you do that, but also take care of yourself at the same time? So being mindful of your patterns is one of the key things. I know a lot of people very automatically, I mean, cell phone addiction is certainly a real thing. It's something that I certainly have experienced, something that I consciously have to work on um, because I use my cell phone for a lot of my practice and my business. Um, but being mindful of patterns, like are you picking up the phone automatically even when you don't need it? Are you, pay, you know, picking up the phone to scroll through, through a newsfeed you know, just before you go to bed? Um, those are, you know, usually indicators are, you know, some people even wake up in the middle of the night to check their cell phone. Those are usually indicators that, that you're going to have to distance yourself from the technology. And, you know, it's, it's a really common struggle for a lot of people right now. Um, but being very mindful of your patterns, uh, can be really enlightening. Um, sometimes people... You know, in terms of avoiding media burnout, sometimes people, if they want to stay informed, they have to change the format in which they're getting news. And this is, I find, 
you know, incredibly important for people that tend to be, um, their cup tends to fill pretty quickly. They're fairly sensitive. You know, choosing visual media, watching videos, um, looking at articles that have really graphic photographs may not be the best way to consume news for them. So being, you know, smart about which, which kind print may be best without photos. So you can stay informed and stay on top of, um, you know, the, the matters at hand, but not overstimulate the nervous system and put yourself subconsciously into a state of stress. So changing the way that you consume news can be helpful. So, you know, going from video to print, um, going from visual to audio. So listening to podcasts or listening to the news, but not actually watching it can be, can be helpful. Um, I really have been recommending for most people to plan breaks. This is something I've also been implementing for myself. Um, but really planning breaks, not just around uh, paying attention to news and social media, but also just in, in general working with technology. So the irony is that oftentimes I use technology to have people do this, but um, they can set a timer for every 10 to 15 minutes. Um, they'll look away from their screens if they have office jobs or things like that. What I oftentimes will will have people do is actually turn their phones off for a chunk of the day and they get to choose what that is. Because, um, you know, understandably some people will need their phone for their work or, you know, family matters, etc. But um, if that is in the realm of possibility, actually turning it turn, turning it completely off and putting it away can be, can do two things. It can give them some relief that they may not have known that they needed. And it also can be a really enlightening exercise into how um, closely attached they are to their phone and to technology. So if they notice that they're grabbing for it, even though they know consciously that it's off, that can be a really enlightening awareness exercise for them. So planning, planning the breaks for your technology use is really, really helpful for a lot of people. Um, another thing that popped up in this in this article I was looking at was um, you know, really taking care of yourself, especially if you know that you have a predisposition to kind of you know reaching full capacity. And I think that um, a lot of times when people get overly frenzied by social media it's and, and also news, it's oftentimes a symptom of a much larger stress um, issue that's going on for people. And this isn't just individually, this is also you know, as a whole. So doing things to take care of your physical and emotional health, um, and of course this will be different for everyone, but practicing self-care generally it, it generally will increase a person's capacity to be able to um, pay attention to things that may be more stressful um, if they did not do that. So self-care, I think, at this point in time, um, it's always and forever been really important. But I think just with what I'm seeing, people kind of come in with, with co their concerns. Um, you know, really making sure to focus on sleep nourishing themselves as best that they can, um, that can help create a, a an easier baseline for stressors that, that come their way. And I've done talks before on, you know, blood sugar and, and how that impacts our reactivity and all of that stuff, but um, that's, you know, I thought it was really neat that they actually brought that up in this article as part of, you know, reducing your risk of um, media burnout. Um, and, you know, I think oftentimes people will kind of get in a frenzy about, you know, all of the things that, that pop their way um, in terms of, you know, calls for letters to be written, calls for online surveys and, and all of that stuff. And I think that, that one of the, 
best ways to kind of bring yourself down from that is actually to go out into your community and do things on a community level and connect with the people um, that you may actually be talking to on social media. But being with them in person can actually be a really great way to recharge. Um, having that, you know, actual proxim close proximity with, with the people that you're connecting with online and through technology. So those are um, some of the key things I've been bringing up for patients lately. And biggest one I would say is if you can, you know, if it's possible and safe for you to be able to turn your phone off or to turn computers off and take time, the best remedy, the best remedy is to not only turn it off, but if you can get outside and go somewhere in nature, and it doesn't have to be anywhere crazy, it can be a nice park bench somewhere. If that is possible and accessible for you, to really, you know, take five minutes, even just five minutes a day, can have a huge impact on bringing that sympathetic nervous response down and bringing that rest and digest mode up. So... Thanks for joining me again for another installment of Wellness Ed Sunday. I hope you guys have an awesome week. If you're in the Northeast, you may not be poking your nose outside uh, in the first half of the week, but um, I highly recommend going and, and getting a little nature time to help soothe the soul. So I'll see you guys next week. Have an awesome, um, awesome week throughout um, the next few days, and I will see you guys later. Take care.